In the last video, we plotted the trajectory of, of a ball being catapulted into the air, reaching its maximum height, falling back down to ground, and then bouncing again, and falling back down to ground after that. And to do this, we used effectively the same loop twice. One loop for the catapult, and one loop for the first bounce. In this video, we're going to nest these loops inside a, an outside loop that will be controlled by the velocity of the ball at ground level. And when the velocity of the ball at ground level is zero, we know the ball will have come to rest. So we're going to copy this script into a new script. We're going to delete the second loop. I'll leave the end statement because we'll use it for the outside loop. And then we're going to add a statement at the top here saying that while u of y, instead of saying u of y greater than zero, if you think about it, u of y is equal to u of y times the coefficient of restitution, which is e, that theoretically will never be zero. So rather than say as long as u of y is greater than zero, we'll actually say when it as long as it's greater than, let's say, 0 0.1 then we'll just change the indentation. So now we have one outside loop and one inside loop. Let's save and run that. We'll call this lesson 3b. And that's the result of our plot. Now something's not quite right here, is it? Um, some of the values aren't coming down to ground. We can inspect the data directly by typing Y in the command window, and that will show us all the data. Let's just have a quick look at what's going on there. And we can see that we've actually got 1400 data points nearly, and at the end they're pretty much all zero. So let's go back to the code. And instead of saying as long as ut plus a half at squared is greater than or equal to zero, let's say if it's greater than or equal to a very small number. Let's say one, two, three, four, I don't know, five, one. So it's a very small but negative number. Let's see what happens then. If we run that, okay, let's stretch this a bit. Now what's happening is we are getting everything coming to zero, but some of the values are probably slightly less than zero, which is why we've got this border across the bottom. So let's add one extra piece of logic. What we'll say if, if x is less than zero then let it equal to zero. So this is an if statement with an end statement. Save and run that and now our ball is working properly. And that's the end of lesson 3b. In the next lesson we will add a graphical user interface to allow the user to change factors like the coefficient of restitution and the launch velocity and so on. <laughs>